If you were an On Taking Pictures listener, you know how all over the place some of the conversations with Bill Wadman and me tended to get, and this one's no exception. We talk a little about gear, a little about process, and a little about whatever tangent we happen to feel like following. In other words, just a normal chat between friends who have literally hundreds of hours of recorded conversations behind them. I hope you enjoy it. Hey, I was thinking I had a, based on our conversation yesterday, I had a, I had a potential topic, which is sort of workflow inertia. You know what I mean? Like, like the way you do things like right now I've decided I'm not using audio hijack kind of anymore just because it's another piece of software. And like you were saying that crazy stuff that goes on, I just end up using my mix pre and just record both sides going in and out on my mix pre. Um, Oh, I didn't know the mix pre is a recorder. recorded. Yeah, no, that's the whole thing. It's mostly a recorder. And it just oh, so it's got, what, it's got like a little SD card built in. Yeah, it's, you put an SD mm. in the back and you just fill it up. And I've got a 128 gig SD card in there that I had that wasn't actually that fast. So it's not great for photos, but for pff, audio, it's fine. So I just have it record all three mic inputs all the time, whether or not I'm using them. So, uh, okay. So you're still, but you're still using Skype, right? I'm using Skype. And then I set the mix pre so what, to you, be you the go interface out of your in computer out. Into, into the mix pre. Yeah. Or and how? I plug my okay. headphones into the mix pre. So you don't have the mix pre connected via USB. You've just got a no, solid audio. No, 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 no. It's, it's connected via USB. It's my interface. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So my mic plugs in there, and my headphones plug in there, and then it plugs into the computer via USB. See, I, I've been, you know, I, I've been on the fence on this, on this. I mean, for a long time on this roadcaster thing, and it, now it looks like they're going to come out with another one. Although they're being really cagey. I've asked four different forums, like asked them in four different forums. You know, why are you sending out? Uh, uh, surveys to to certain users asking what features they'd like to see, if not readying, you know, another one to come out. And they've been very cagey. Oh, they so this responded. is this is a. Oh, I see. Okay, so this is a. I, I looked at this once a while back. I think you mentioned it, but I haven't had a good yeah. look at it. So it's like a little. Well, it's a little interface slash mixing board thing. Right. Right. That's it records internally. This. It records on oh. you know multiple tracks. But apparently the the, the thing with it was is that like the 1.0 release, there was a lot missing. And okay. then they've done subsequent firmware updates that have added new features and added more functionality. And it's supposed to be really solid now, but it's expensive, right? Well, it's, it's got like compressors, deessers. You can put yeah, filters. Yeah, it's got the whole thing. So it does all that but, on the fly as you're recording. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But if you buy one of these things now, I don't want to spend $600 for one of these things and a new one comes out in January or yeah, February. Yeah, I, I would wait for a second one unless you yeah. can get the first one suddenly for 350 and then it's like, okay, well, if it does everything I right. need it to do. Right, right, right. right. Is it, uh, what's this? USB C too, as uh, USB C mm-hmm. as well. So that's. That's yeah. good. Yeah, I and mean, it, you, know, you can power it with a with a yeah. USB battery. You can power it from bus power. You can plug it in. Like, I, there's do you all know? Kinds and, of stuff. and then, how do you get the stuff off of there? Does it show up as a drive? Well, see, this is the thing, right? Is yes, but and I think maybe this has it, it either has changed or it's going to change, but uh, in an in an update, a firmware update. But it records everything as a polywave. So oh, you yeah, have sure. to bring in this polywave and then split it apart and get well, all the Reaper, the Reaper knows about polywaves and you could just if you're mm. editing in Reaper you could just bring it into Reaper and it'll it'll put it out yeah. to five different ch- channels. And apparently it records even if like like let's say you and I are recording if you're in multi-track mode because it can record you know 12 different channels or something because it records the four inputs and then the eight uh the eight sound pads and then a a, a stereo mix down <laughs> It records all of that stuff, regardless of whether you use it or not. So, so right. it, yeah, whatever but you're I mean, doing, you end up with like 16 tracks or something. Yeah, but I mean, to be fair, if there's nothing, I mean, audio is so small not a big compared deal. to anything yeah, else. Not a big Wait, deal. Or so those pads are so you can go, that's gorgeous, or you know what I yeah, mean? Right. Like you can have you can have those <laughs> now on there. sale. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what those are for. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's funny. You know, like like the the the, the radio station equivalent of a cart. Sure. Yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 That's that's just funny that. I guess you know what it is is that I just have never done any shows that are that kind of show. But I guess if right. you did, that would be very useful. It also seems like it has four headphone outputs, which is actually cool if you're actually doing something in person. Four headphone outputs, although apparently the headphone amps are pretty lackluster, and you get a lot of buzz and, oh, and okay. 
distortion. It, it doesn't end up in the recording, but you can yeah. hear it while you're monitoring. I mean, that is one thing about the mix, the sound devices stuff is that it's, you know, clean to super clean, unbelievable levels. Yeah. Um, and then the, the other thing too, I just noticed, can you, so can you use this separate from, if you just plugged the power into it, can you use it without a computer? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of cool too. Yeah. So if you were yeah. going to so go it's, it on becomes location a portable do something, type yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I like the workflow. You know, it's funny. Actually, it you're a good person to talk to about this. Yeah. Do what? If it was three ninety nine, I'd be like, yeah. If it was three ninety nine, yeah. But at five ninety nine, and it doesn't. You know, everything's an extra. The little colored rings that go on the on the on the XLR cords, those are twenty bucks. The little TRRS, you know, that, that lets you plug into the phone, that's another twenty bucks. Like they're just nickel diming. After starting at a pretty high price point for what you're getting. Yeah, they're just trying know. to idiot proof it for idiots. I mean, for with those, <laughs> no, with those like XLR plug things. So it's, you know. So now you're speaking our, my language. Well, we're set up <laughs> and we're going in and, and, and doing this thing and we want to make it sort of idiot proof so that somebody can just grab it and, oh, the orange goes to orange. You know what I mean? Right, like, right, just, right, you know. right. I mean, it makes sense. Um, I guess. I, I mean, it's, it's, I know, I, I mean, it makes sense that they make them. It doesn't make sense that they charge for them. I agree with you on that. Right. They, it should like, be in the those box. little plastic things should be in the box. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Look you at know, that. It costs eight a, cents to make. The USB one is a USB power cable allowed to be powered by any USB output. So yeah, you could probably run this off of like one of those big anchor batteries. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can. That's, you that's can. what I do with the mix pre. If I go up on the roof or something or go to somebody's house, I just bring one of the little 10,000 amp hour uh, anchor batteries. Do you have to use that. like a, 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 a FET head or a cloud lifter with your PR 40 or is it, does oh, it have enough headroom? This thing is, <laughs> yeah, this thing Super has clean. so much, uh, uh, so much power in the preamps. It's nuts. Wow. Um, cool. in fact, the, uh, it's funny enough. Um, uh, I was talking, was that Claude or somebody, somebody I was talking to was talking to one of the sound devices guys at, you know, one of the I don't know, at, you know, at the store like the NAM or, show yeah, or yeah, something, yeah, one of those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guy said, listen, we don't say it because we don't want to say this and then have people come back to us. But if you see anything on the meter, you're fine. Like, wow. <laughs> like they're so wow. clean that if, if it's way, if it's 40 dB down, don't worry about it. You can like, pull it up and post and you're fine. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Like, in fact, some guy, there's a kid who I shot a couple of years ago who knew that I had this one and wanted to sort of test it. And came over, he had a Marantz recorder that he had mm. some guy opened it up and modified the mic pre's, like, you know, like made them better. Oh, wow. Yeah. And cool. so he brought it over and he brought over a few microphones and he plugged them into a mic splitter and then recorded the output to both recorders and then took those files home to open them up to A, B them and to like look at them and stuff. Right. right. And I, I texted him the next day. I said, so, what, so what's, what's the thing? He said, yeah, the mic pre's and your thing are 16 dB quieter than mine. Wow. After modification. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Like the upgraded ones were 16 wow. dB better. So it's just, yeah. I mean, I, I, audio quality wise, I don't even question this thing. But yeah. the only yeah. th annoying thing about it is that like, you know, we're recording for whatever, eight minutes I hit record on it. Um, it just means that when we're done, I have to pop the US, the, the SD card out and pop it into the computer. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it like doesn't recognize step. it as a drive. Well, it does if I go into the settings and tell it to show up as a drive. It can't be both an audio and a drive simultaneously. Oh, okay. Because I think that's a limitation of USB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, you know, I can, yeah, I can say, oh, yeah, be a drive now. But it's easier just to pop the disk out than it is to go in there and make that change every time. You know right. what I mean? Right, 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 right. And then th this way, it's always ready to go as this. And, you know, it's, it's sort of like... Um, it's lo-fi sneaker net, but it always works, right. you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have to worry about Audio Hijack saying, you know, we, I, we had, on, I guess it was on Heather's little laptop. One of the laptops, Heather would record her zombie podcast. And then, I don't know, a few, like a month or two ago, it just started doing these weird echoey things inside of Audio Hijack. Oh, really? Yeah. And I could not on fix her it. end or on both. On, ends? He was hearing her echoed and then she was hearing herself, even though I hadn't changed anything in the layout. And I went and recreated it, made it super basic, just like record my side, record Skype. Right, right. And it still was acting weird. And I was like, well, fuck this. We don't have time for this. Let's just plug this yeah. thing in and we'll record you externally. And I've just been doing it this way for now. And um, uh, Stuart on the other side has been using our recordings of him as his recording. 
Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, it's not going to make it any better than Skype sounds, but right, you know right, what I mean? Right, it's, right. it's a nice, clean version of that, you know? Hmm. Anyway. Yeah, so it's, talk about. no, it's, it's, uh, all this stuff is interesting and, and, you know, I, I know I'm going to change things up at some point. Um, but, but there is like the way that you do it and then there's, there's a certain level of intransigence and I'm not saying you, I'm saying everybody yeah. with changing up how you do it, whether it's the lights you use, you know, the, the, the way you process stuff in Lightroom, the paints yeah. you use, like, it's like, no, I use golden paints. Why? Because I used golden paints for the last 50 years. Right, it's, right, right. You know, and it's, you know, you, you get into these things and maybe it's the right answer for you, or maybe you just haven't looked at it in a long time. And I think that in some ways, you know, our conversation yesterday about, uh, about Big Sur the, uh, on uh, Accidental Tech Podcast the other day or yesterday or whatever today's I was listening to it this morning early. Um, they were talking about the, the, the question was talk, talk John Syracuse out of installing Big Sur on, on, <laughs> on his computer. He's just like, listen, my podcast schedule is usually really busy, so I don't have like days to like rebuild. And he's one of those people who's like super anal about rebuilding everything, you know, on right. his computer. So he's just, you know, this is time when I'm off of work and we're not doing shows next week for Christmas. So maybe this is the chance I get to go. And this is the it. only yeah. window that he's got. Yeah. 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 And he was talking about it and, and he's just like, you know, I, I would love to have the better, the new messages stuff in there. And, you know, Catalina's never been great for me. And I have a new laptop cause he's got one of those airs or whatever, like you have, you know, the M ones. He's mm -hmm. just like, I've been using big Sur, and like, it's fine. And it seems stable. It seems as stable as Catalina ever was or more. So why am I sitting on Catalina? Like talk me out of why I shouldn't just right. upgrade. But it was just this thing where there is a certain amount of like, you don't want to mess with anything. I was using Mojave up until very recently when it, well, a couple of months ago, remember there was that crazy screw up right. where they messed up. Right, the update. right, right. Yeah. There was a supplemental security <laughs> fix that completely yeah. messed things up. It, like so hosed everybody. Yeah. And, yeah. and, for me, I would have, I'd still be on Mojave right now if it weren't for that, you know, because um, it was working I, I'm just not fine. an early adopter. When, when I finally did install Catalina, and I think this is indicative of, of a lot of things in my life, when I finally made the jump to Catalina, it was after, Big I don't know, half a dozen dot releases. So it was, oh, yeah. you know, all the things that were wrong with it or, or cleagy or buggy or, you know, otherwise wonky about the initial release had been fixed and well, I never had the problems yeah. that people talked to me yeah, theoretically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but big Sur, I've, I haven't, I mean, you know, knock wood. It feels pretty it's good. been, I think the most stable, smooth Mac OS release probably s since, I don't know, maybe even El Cap. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, and that's, and that's exactly it. And you, and, and with your new computer, you're forced to use it. You yeah. don't have a choice. Yeah, it came with, yeah, it came with Big you Sur installed. You can't downgrade, you know. Um, right. So there, there is a certain amount of, well, here I am. I guess I got to figure out the new way of doing things. But, you know, and if you, for whatever reason, didn't have um, uh, Audio Hijack wasn't working or whatever it is, you'd have to come up with something else, either using your Zoom recorder right. to do it or, you know what I mean? You'd have to come up with some whole new way of doing what you do. And maybe it would end up being a better way of doing what you do, you know? Who, so like, do, you, do you think as a whole, like even... Even creatively, do you feel like you're better when you get to choose to change up a, a <laughs> process or a workflow or something, or whether you're, you're better if you're forced you're to and edge. you have to adapt? Yeah, I guess sometimes I think most of the time it depends where I am in some cycle of something, you know? Right. I think that I wait into almost always when I say, Hey, you know, it's kind of fun. Like I installed big Sur on this thing and now it's like doing all kinds of weird things every time I reboot. And now there's a, there's a drive on my desktop right now called update what it's for, which OS is actually using it for something when it, re so <laughs> when it relaunches. I have no idea, but I'm just like leaving it there because something was happening that I apparently interrupted, but I've got work to do. So it's going to wait. Oh, you didn't put it there. <clears throat> no. I think in one of my reboots, I must have started rebooting into Big Sur and it started doing some sort of update and I stopped it because I was trying to get into Catalina to do something and I didn't realize right. it was trying to do some kind of update. You know what I mean? Like, pff, right, I don't right, know. Right, I could have right. really screwed something up. I don't know. Um, so, the, you know, there's that kind of thing. And then the other day, like I said, I had that weird problem in Photoshop where right. it's like off the screen. I'm like, what the hell? Off the screen? 
Like I've never had anything like that happen in Photoshop. And and a, a friend of mine, uh, um, uh, who she she just she worked off a of MacBook Pro for years. She got a good jo- she got a big job. She made a chunk of money, and she was like, "I want to get a really good monitor." And so she spent four thousand dollars on like the top of the line ISO, which is great. But when you get into that level of color calibration and settings and all the rest of it, in order to get the most out of it, you kind of have to know a lot of stuff to right. get it right. Right. And she didn't know anything. And we're in the time of COVID. So she and I are trying to, <laughs> she's, she's calling me and asking me to help. You're looking at color over Zoom going, that doesn't look right. Oh, I swear to God. You write this oh, right there. Oh yeah, <laughs> and we're sharing screens, and I'm like, I, wait, but I'm seeing what the OS is seeing. I'm not seeing what the right. monitor right, seeing. Right, right. And her monitor has internal lookup tables, so it's doing all of that conversion in the monitor, not on the, you know, not on the yeah, not on yeah. your end. So anyway, I'm running her computer trying to get this all set up, and there's of course a built-in calibrator little thing that like like this like little motorized thing that pops out on that monitor. Right, it's like built in, and. She and I are going back and forth and then she calls. And so I get that all worked out. And then she calls me like a week ago and she says, I have this thing in, in Lightroom. And when I open it up in Photoshop, um, it looks different. And I was like, huh? Uh, okay. So is one using a uh, one well, profile and the other one's using another? Right. So I'm like, okay, well, it uh, could be a lot of things. Let's try to figure this out over the phone with somebody who's not savvy about <laughs> color, you know. <laughs> and so we end up when did you get a when did you get a job at best buy though <laughs> it's I, I got a, i got a blue shirt it's got a little apple logo on it and uh and and it's fine and it's like you know she's a very nice woman a friend of mine great photographer you know but this is like just not her forte right and so and then she then she says what what's weird is that when i drag it from photoshop over to the other monitor over to the macbook uh it looks correct I'm like, wait, what? So the built-in screen looks correct, but the ISO is the, wonky. The built-in screen matches Lightroom on the ISO, but Photoshop on the ISO right next to Lightroom on the ISO does not match. Does not. Weird. And, and I was like, well, if there is some slight difference in the profiles, because we also profiled our laptop, the right. chan- it, chances are that it's just coincidence that it actually looks correct on you know, the laptop versus the thing, you know? And then as we're playing with it, she goes, I swear to God, when I open up this file, it looks wrong. But if I resize the window, it looks right. And I said, what? She says, if I close it, (laughs) I open it up. I have it right next to the one in Lightroom. It looks wrong. But if I move that window at all, it like kind of snaps, it snaps into being correct. And I was like, are you sure? She goes, I am not crazy. That's what's happening. And so the so only- is, is Adobe ignoring the LUT that you uh, well so what? so I the only thing I can think is that there's some bug in Photoshop 22 or whatever it's up yeah, to yeah yeah which is like has some weird display bug with the drivers on her lap you know on her laptop on the external screen which make it so that when it first opens it's using some sort of translation maybe using generic srgb or something maybe. and maybe yeah right it goes know. to, to and then, whatever and it that's needs the other thing her, you know all of her files lightroom uses photo pro photo rgb as its internal working space mhm Photoshop by default uses sRGB unless you change it to Pro Photo RGB. Right. But, and has she done that or have you done that well, on her here's behalf? Well, here's one more step further is that she's been exporting her TIFFs in Adobe RGB. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> right? Okay. So, so not only does the right hand not know what the left hand is doing, it's somebody else's left hand. <laughs> yeah, there are changes. There are differences happening. There's deltas on multiple levels, right? Right. And trying to figure out the matrix of these different things and how they intersect and what's affecting what. And not to mention the fact that, you know, the monitor, the ISO is, you know, 10 times better, an order of magnitude more accurate monitor than the one built into her four-year-old MacBook. Right. Right, right, right. Um, also means that maybe it's just that you're noticing a difference because this monitor is so much more accurate that like little tiny shifts, you're noticing them more because it's a better monitor. You know what I mean? Like it's like it's much right. more subtle. So does does Bill see this as a challenge to solve or an annoyance to squelch? <laughs> Can I answer that once I solve it? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> if, if I solve it, then it will be a mountain that I climbed and solved. If I don't solve it, then it's, you know, it's Adobe's fault. Yeah. What are the, what's the over under on Bill going crazy before solving this problem in right. trying to solve the problem? Right. But you, but you see what I mean? How that, you know, yeah, this is yeah. an example of now, I think what happened is that Photoshop automatically updated right. to this latest version. She's like, I haven't updated Photoshop in a while. And I was like, mm, huh. I think Adobe did. So, you so know, they're pushing they're pushing automatic updates unless you tell them not to. Yeah. So she rebooted her computer, or you know, I don't know exactly what instantiates it, but you know, there are auto update. There's keep my apps updated. Right. Inside of um, inside of the uh, Creative Cloud app. Hmm. So it could be that she didn't want to do this, and it chose to do it itself. Now. Right. If you're somebody who's working and trying to get stuff done, yeah, and have she's to send a working stuff to professional a client, trying to get things out the door. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And then, and the biggest problem with I think color stuff with photographers is that now you f- like what you thought was reality. You know, looking at your laptop screen or looking at this ISO or looking at my iMac Pro or whatever, right? right. You think that that is reality, so sure. you make choices and decisions based upon what you're looking at. But the minute you look at another screen and it's slightly different, and then you open it in a different app and that same picture is slightly different, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, <laughs> you go, you're questioning your entire existence. Yeah. Which one is canon? Yeah. You know, like, which and then one? you're wondering, who have I been sending this stuff to? Is Who, who of those people are using this, this same ISO monitor and yeah. thinking, wow, her colors are way wonky. Yeah, that's, that skin's a little yellow. Which, yeah. and, and, and we're talking about real subtle. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, not not yeah, real yeah, subtle, yeah. but like pretty subtle. The kind of subtle where if you shipped this, if you sent this to somebody to make a print for you and you got a print back and you didn't have them right next to each other, you'd say, oh, that print looks great. Yeah, yeah. But then you put it next to you go, oh, yeah, it is a little more green on, right, on, right. on her shirt or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The but, cheeks are a little different here. But, uh, yeah, yeah, like okay, does okay. that matter? Who? I don't, I don't know, you know? Yeah. But so, but if you're of that mindset and, and well, you if are you're spending $4,000 on a monitor. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, so, so I think that, I think that the, the problem is, is that I think we all want, whether we're podcasting, whether we're working on photos, whether we're editing audio, the minute things start sort of shifting under our feet that we can't control, you know what I mean? Right. That's when it gets frustrating. Um, okay, let, let's go back for a minute. Let me sure. let me ask you something. Let's go back a couple years now, when you <laughs> when you went to medium <laughs> format. <laughs> yeah, have a seat. When you went to medium format, I had to switch my workflow entirely. But did did you see that as an opportunity, an opportunity or an obstacle? Um, at the time, I saw it you, as as a necessity. I yeah, you know I. I liked I so I I use Capture One now for for my raw editing, um, right? But only because the sensor in the Pentax is the same one as the IQ two fifty. So Phase has done a whole lot of really great work on maximizing the raw files that come off that sensor. So I thought this, have they have they done an update where you can read it natively, or do you still have to do the little batch thing? I still have thing? to do my little yeah, batch yeah. thing. In fact, yeah, if anything, yeah. I think they've made it harder to do. Oh, really? Yeah. In fact, I'm using Capture One 12, I think, and not Capture One 22 or whatever the heck they're up to. Because they right. jumped from 12 to 20, I think, and now they're on right, 21. Right, Yeah, like 21, 22, something. Yeah, like I'm using yeah. Capture One 12 because I, I, as far as I know, there's nothing in there that I need. You know what I mean? Nothing new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I'm using it, yeah. So I have to do that little metadata conversion thing. And then I have to, I end up having, I basically have one session because Capture One's more of a session kind of uh, okay. design. So you're not using individual catalogs then or, or one monster catalog? Well, I would love to use one monster catalog. That's what I did in Lightroom. But yeah. if you do that, there is a catalog function in Capture One, but it's kludgy and it slows things down. So what I do is I just have a single session and then inside the session in the little uh, the little sort of library window is is your hard drive is like all of the folders of your hard drive you can you know go around your hard drive and do whatever you need to do um, right so i just jump between folders and it sort of rebuilds the session in real time so it's oh it's okay. it basically i just say like oh no that's not the folder i'm looking in now now this right, one right, is right. and because so you're almost using it as bridge like just as, yes. a, as a kind of a real time yep. this is where i'm at and here's what i need kind of thing exactly okay. right i don't okay. have a separate session for each uh 
each folder I go into, but it's all right. right because all of the stuff that capture one does, it saves inside of folders inside with your pictures. Mm. So if I just jump to another folder, if, if, if capture one has seen that before it keeps all those settings and, and everything. So kind of, do you, do you use like capture one as your import tool or do you import manually? And oh, then um, I navigate? import manually. Yeah. You do. I, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. In fact, well, as part of the thing, so I, I stick my card in, I copy them to a folder, which, you know, I'm particular about like how I name my folder. And then right. I select everything and I use my little script, which both allows me to rename it. It takes the underscore image underscore or whatever it is and replaces mm-hmm. that with whatever mm-hmm. I type in. So I could type in, you know, Jeffrey Sidoris. And then it would use the the post fix, the, the you know, the the, the numbers of the, right. f- of the file stay with there. So it'd be Jeffrey Sidoris, 4467 or whatever, you know. Right. And right, right. so in the process, it renames and it converts them into the right kind of thing. And then I just go into Capture One and they're all there. Yeah. Um so, I mean, so I had to do all of that, right. When I got this camera, I had to start doing it completely differently. Right. Cause that's not how you had done it with your Canon stuff. No, I would, I would, use, I would use Lightroom for that. Um, right. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it was a little bit of a, uh, I don't know to, to me, it, it, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about having, having things be a little more slow and deliberate and harder sometimes is better. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See everything Jeffrey Sidoris has ever said or written. That's right. Um, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, but so so for me, it, it it all of that sort of conjuring in some ways right. kind of went along with the whole idea of moving to a bigger format and kind of shooting slower anyway. Mm-hmm. So it was like, okay, so my job now is to basically process the get, get the rollout and put it on the reel. You know what I mean? That's kind of how yeah, it felt yeah. like sticking the card in the back of the camera or in the back of the computer. Um, does Has that- there been a practical upshot to all of it? Do you do you feel like you're? And this is this is a. I mean, Jesus, we've spent ten thousand hours talking about good and better, but have we? <laughs> <laughs> but was it well, good or better? Yeah, I don't was know. it good or better? Where did we land? <laughs> do, ha, has there been? Has there been a? I'm not even going to say an improvement. I'm going to say yeah. change. Has there been an, a change that you can see in the way you photograph? Because you've had a few years now to to sure. kind of work I'm out some of the kinks. I'm very used to this camera, yeah. Yeah. Um, y- yes, I think in t- two ways. I think that I there's so much dynamic range in this camera that I can shoot in a certain way and kind of know what I have when mm-hmm. I go home and know mm-hmm. how how malleable it is. You know what I mean? Like, so sometimes people say, oh, can I see the back of the camera? I was like, I can show it to you, but I'm, you know, I'm exposing for the sky. So you're in complete shadow. So you can't right, see anything. Right. Because you know? you know, you've got a lot of room to massage things on the back end. Yeah, I have more, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got gobbles of, of, of yeah. dynamic range. So, so that's part of it. Um, and the, the, the shape of the, the ratio of the sensor really changed the way I look at things. Um, mm-hmm. cause this is like a three by four. So it's a little, you know, it's closer to like a six, four, five kind of ratio. Um, right. which is very close to like a, a four by five ratio, you know, like an eight by 10. Right. Um, so almost, so are, are you able to see that in your, in your mind's eye when you're composing yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. compose accordingly? Yeah, cause, now? cause uh, four by five is, I mean, it's not that much. It's like 10% off, off the longer um, right. dimension. And then you're at four by five. So I kind of, I'm always shooting just a little bit further back than I know the final image is going to be because I'll crop in just a scooch, you know what I mean? And it gives me a little mm-hmm, room to work. Mm-hmm. To give you um, that length that you want, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, 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 but I like that sort of ratio. In fact, every once in a while I'll use somebody's camera that's like, you know, a, a 35, a three by two, like 35 millimeter camera. I'll be like, oh my God, it's so wide. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or when you turn a portrait, it's so tall. Like it feels right. like, it feels, <laughs> it feels like suddenly you're shooting with like, uh, like the, the empire state building as, yeah. as your window, you know? And you're like, what the I need heck? an 11 by 22 frame. If you, yeah. yeah. You know? Um, so in, in those ways it's different. And I, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, I like my work in the past few years and I think that some of it, you know, like I think, I think that having this camera has improved my work. And I think that the working with this camera has made me a better photographer. Certainly when you're working on files in Photoshop and you're retouching or you're trying to do selections or you're trying to do all that, having a lot of resolution is amazing because right. you know what I mean? You, you're trying to do hair against something or, you know what I mean? You're trying to select yeah, 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 yeah. whatever or, um, or fabric, you know, not just having fabric look, just look at this smooth, you know, having right. it actually have structure and stuff in it is, is so cool. 
And it's like, I mean, sure, give me more if there was a new camera and it was 80 or 100 megapixels and that's the new one, I'd buy it. But, right. but I don't and, need and didn't more cost than this. Fourteen thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need more than this. Fifty is great. You know, um, it's. It, I mean, I thought about that. I was talking to somebody, my friend Nick Curry, um, who because of me having this camera bought himself the the D, the six four five D which is a CCD version of this camera. It's like 30 something megapixels, 36 oh, really? megapixel. Yeah, there's a 36 megapixel CCD version of this camera that came before it. It was like the, the predecessor of this camera. Okay, okay. And, and then can, they changed to the CMOS. Yeah, yeah, and you can get them for, you know, $1,500 or something for the body. I mean, it's oh, like, wow. they're really cheap because, you know, not that there weren't that many of them and not that many people want them. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's a, it's an easy camera to get. And he's got a bunch of cameras and he just wanted something to like shoot portraits when he had enough light and was going to light it and whatever. So he bought one and loves it and now trying to sell it to upgrade to this one. But, but the point of this story was, um, uh, la, 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 la. I forget opportunity what I or <laughs> obstacle. Oh yeah. That, that I think he, you know, he sees it as, uh, 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 th- that, that it's that it's kind of nice having something that slows you down a little bit you know what i mean and that mm-hmm. that camera is way more limited than this one because you know this one i'll shoot at 1600 with strobes outside if if i need more ambient i'll shoot at 1600 i did the other day i shot this woman who's who's the lead uh in wicked you know the the musical oh yeah 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 and we were underneath the 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 theater that wicked is in is between two street blocks and it's a 20 foot overhang you know what i mean like it's underneath it's between two buildings it's like you have to walk like a walkway between two blocks right so you're getting you're getting very little it was 3 30 in the afternoon which nowadays is like no light and we were underneath right. a thing you know 50 feet from any sort of sunlight at all and there were you know so it was like there was almost no ambient light to sort of fill and i did not like you know i've I brought little strobes with me. I didn't bring, you know, let's, let's light up 50 feet of a side of the building. Um, so I was at, I, I was at 1600 and my strobes were down at like 128th power. They were all the way down. You know, I had to keep just moving that back. little teeny bit of kick that you needed. Yeah. But that kick ended up being, you know, like a lot, wow. you know? Yeah. 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 Um, but anyway, so yeah, opportunity. Yeah. I, it's, I, I don't, I don't mind that, that kind of workflow change totally works because that's, it's what I wanted. You know what I mean? Right. Like I was, right. I was looking for something that made the whole process a little more deliberate and less spray and pray. Like this camera is not a fast camera. It can do, I think three frames a second, but I've never turned on multi-frame, you know, I've never used it that way. Right. Um, and so, you know, some, yeah, there's some people I meet and it's like, man, how many pictures did you take? Well, I took 600 pictures. I'm like, you took 600 pictures. <laughs> I did, I did. Well, it was a long lunch. <laughs> I know. I did a. I did a. Um, I did a fashion shoot for this hat company. This uh, friends, my friends' hat company, recently, and and we were in a studio, and there were there were you know models who looked great no matter what you did, like you know point the camera in their general direction and press the button, right. and it looked great. <laughs> and um, I came home and I shot. I we shot for like three or four hours, and it was. I came home and there was like eleven hundred pictures. I was like, holy crap, eleven hundred wow. pictures for me. That's, that's a lot for you. That's yeah, that's ton. huge. I mean, we shot yeah. for hours, and there were multiple models and all the rest of it, but it felt like way too many. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just think there, there's people who do that all the time. It's just yeah. the time it takes to go through that many pictures to make decisions on them is just excruciating and exhausting to me. You know? Yeah. Um, has your decision making, your sequencing skills have have you noticed a change because you don't have as much to work with? Do you do you have to be sort of necessarily more critical or tighter in your decisions? How has that changed? Um, no, because I didn't actually shoot that much. Even when I was shooting cannons, I didn't shoot mm-hmm, all that many. Mm-hmm. Um, but 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 I mean, um, I think I think I think the, back in two thousand seven when I did my first daily thing i think that's when i sort of cut my teeth on editing down quickly you know right going from 200 to 100 to 50 to 25 to 12 and then it's like okay which five of these do i really care about right lately actually i've been deleting the ones that are zero stars and sometimes the ones that are one stars like if i shot 300 pictures or something on some crazy shoot it's like do i ever really need the one that only got to one star you know what right. I mean? Like, when am I ever? Yeah. Are you going to, are you going to go back? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know, maybe go through and find one that maybe was a clean plate of the background that I was working on. Just did a test shot and I kept it just in case. Okay. Well bump that one up to two stars just so it doesn't get lost in case I need right. it for compositing or something. But like, it's amazing how you can really get with digital 
photography in general and digital media in general, you can get really pack ratty, you know? See, I, I feel that way about the social media. And I've been reading a lot. Li- in fact, you're, you're a great person to talk to about this. I, I've been reading a lot lately about one of, and it's not a trend. I wouldn't say it's a trend, but it's. You know, it's a new trend in social media. It's a lot of all the kids, are, all the influencers are doing it. No, <laughs> actually, they're not doing it. But this idea of, of deleting an Instagram account, not, not deleting the account, but deleting the photos and starting over, doing sort of a, a, a social media spring cleaning. Yeah, what do you think about the people, to, to add to that question, the corollary, what about the people who, you know, have been posting for years and there's stuff from the beginning, but there's only 50 pictures on the whole feed because they delete, they, they curate constantly? You know those people? Uh, yeah, I would almost rather delete everything and start over than than go back and and whittle you know a thousand pictures down to you know here are my two best per year for the past ten years. Yeah, but I think some people do that, right? I or think so. Some people only have thirty six pictures up there, and it's like, well, you have four million followers, and you <laughs> you know, and you've only posted thirty times. Like that's not possible. So obviously yeah. they're posting all the time and just deleting stuff. I don't know. I mean, look, I'm. I've been hovering around the same in terms of audience followers. I've been hovering around the same number for years. So I don't, I don't look at it. We've got, we've gotten all the people we're going to get. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) I am not suddenly, I don't know, but I don't feel like I'm suddenly going to, plus I'm not a photographer. I'm just thinking around, you know, so I'm not suddenly going to post a set of photos and people go, Oh my God, you 14 million people need to see this. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, like, you know, I, I agree on everything you're saying, but at the same time, you know, there are obviously way more people out there than you and I together or you and I separately for whatever, for our individual reasons could be connecting with that. We haven't. Yes. Separate question. I'm just saying, but I'm just saying that it's like the fact that you and I are kind of like, Oh, we're sitting at a, some, some level. Yes. That level makes no sense. That shows up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Anyway, go ahead. I mean, look, we had orders of magnitude more, uh, downloads and listens on on OTP than we have followers sure. every week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. So, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, really, that's the big question. Is like, <laughs> right? So, does it does it warrant? I mean, it, 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 why why are people doing it? I know a couple people who have, and, the and I really would deleting. Yeah, deleting yeah. everything and starting over. And and I've been kicking it around, but then I, I, I go, I ask myself why, and I can't answer it. Like, okay, why? Well, 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 here's, here's a question for you. What is the yeah. value of the thing you posted six weeks ago? If you, let's say, let's say you- I don't you, even remember what it, I don't remember what I posted six days ago, yeah, okay. if Let, anything. Let's say you t- took a picture of, I don't know, like a, a really nice tree you saw while you're taking the dog for a walk, right? Right. Um, and it's a great picture, right? And you put it up and you get your- 80 likes or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever people. 80. Wow. Must've been a really good one. <laughs> you know what I mean though, right? <laughs> yeah. Like you, you get whatever likes you get. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the world moves on. No one's going back to that picture. Well, see, this is what I was talking about with Adrian. Like it, the, 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 there's, there's a short tail on these things. Nobody's going back three years and going, I wonder, I wonder what Bill was doing in 2007. Although I mean, maybe you, a few people are. Yeah. But do you ever, do you ever go to somebody else's, you know, you find somebody else, whether you liked a picture of theirs or you know, the, you, you just discovered them or whatever it is. And sometimes you scroll back and you're like, oh, it's a nice one. You double click and you like some really old thing or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It does happen, but it is, does happen, but, but is I'm that not even, going back. It doesn't happen a lot. And I'm not going back. Typically, I'm not going back years. Yeah. And, that, and, and, and that doesn't have much value for you, the person who posted it. You know right. I mean? The fact that somebody happened to like something that you posted 4 million years ago. And especially <laughs> the way the algorithms work. You know, I don't, I, I still haven't figured out how any of this works. Like right. whether, I mean, you know, I do whatever I need to do and follow all the rules of tagging and blah, blah, blah. Like, it, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Rules in big, giant quotes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because yeah. who yeah. really knows whether they work? Yeah, 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 <laughs> I don't yeah, know. yeah. Obviously, I'm not, ga- obviously you and I are not gaming anything very well. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> but, 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 but I think that there's, you know, the, so, so you, you wonder why maybe there is a, maybe, maybe even deleting everything or deleting some stuff. Maybe the algorithm even sees that as, Oh, that's an active thing because yeah, there's activity there. Yeah. They're churning know. this. Like, you know, there's people who think, and then the whole question of, you know, the whole, if we're just using Instagram as a 
very small microcosm. Like I, I've, I've like dipped my toe into Twitter a little bit lately, although I have to be careful because I end up like looking Trump up and wanting to kill somebody. But, <laughs> but, but isn't that the way you, you start out looking to be inspired and by the end of it, you're getting in like some rant like, with a troll. Son of like, a, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but, uh, but oh, really come here and say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although, wait, can I just say, some, some, uh, somebody I follow, this woman, uh, some journalist or something, put up a post this morning saying, I finally watched uh, Die Hard after 35 years, or, you know, 30 years. Yeah. Welcome and, to the party, pal. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> and I must say, it's not a Christmas movie, right? You know, which is just like throwing meat to the, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. So all these people and are- so, let the yeah, fun begin. So I was just like, so I start reading- <laughs> <laughs> and there's there's ones just like you know you're out of your mind blah 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 and 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 uh and then somebody making a crack about how it's not a uh, christmas movie it's a hanukkah movie or you know whatever the stupid things right, are right, and right, then right. one person writes you're not a christmas movie which, <laughs> 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 which you know that's the thing every once in a while somebody comes up with something on twitter that's actually just really funny you yeah, know what i mean yeah, yeah yeah um but wait back to instagram you know, the, even just as a as a microcosm is, you know, posting. I tend to like to post images. Great, but then there's people I go on and they're posting twenty stories a day. Right. I mean, right. What 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 are you doing with your time? You know what I mean? <laughs> what are you doing with your life? No, but, and maybe they're right. I, I could be wrong. I'm, I'm I'm perfectly willing to say that I'm wrong. I, I totally feel like, you know, I still like websites and email. So what do I know? Yeah, right. Same. same. Um, I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. It's like, you know, I'll ask Adrian, how, how can I bring websites back? She's like, you can't move on. <laughs> right, right, right. But but, but and, and she's she's probably not wrong. No, she's you know? probably not wrong. But is is the is the. Um, uh, is the algorithm looking at me and you and saying, well, they don't put a lot of stories up, so they must be old school years. So then people don't need to find them. But I think there's some truth to that. There, yeah. There's a guy I follow, uh, Chris Doe, and he's he's a graphic designer. He, the Future, you know this this place? The Future? F oh, F -U I don't. F-U-T-U-R. So they about. don't do with the E. Anyway, he's like, look, if you're not posting like 10 picture carousels and posting those multiple times a day, you're missing out because that's what the algorithm is looking for. God, it feels like, you know, I just, I just got out of the shower when I answered you, I was on the rower for 40 minutes. That's what that sounds like to me. Yeah. That sounds like yeah. a job. Yeah. Which, which it may be, you know what I mean? I mean, but you know, but 10 is image it a job? carousels of is, is what? The trade -off of worth it? Is the, yeah. You can't, yeah. I can't take 20 amazing finished pictures a day. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's wrong with what you? What do you think I am, a photographer? <laughs> You know what I mean, though. Not spending all that time on the rower, you can't. Well, you know, I, it's, it, I just, it's a completely, it's just like that, that kind of, and and maybe this is, maybe this is kind of the point, is that like that kind of use of photography is not the kind of photography that I right. do, you know. Well, if it's anything, if it's if it's graphic design or some sort of messaging, right. I mean. So you're going to post what, like 20 quotes a day or motivational snippets just so you, because well, what, it rewards time on platform. I don't understand that. And okay, that's well, probably one of the reasons I fail. Well, okay. That's, that's, that's a good point. And, and I want to extend that is the idea of what about creating controversy for the sake of being noticed? Right. You know, there's right. plenty of people who just not trying to start flame wars, but will say something about like, pff, go on Twitter and say, pff, Portrait photography has turned into a bunch of millennials, blah, 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 right. blah. Just like, to incite some sort of comment feed that then gets noticed exactly. by the algorithm yeah. and then gets kicked up the chain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is that the game you want to play? Is that the game you have to play? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, so, I mean, it's those are the kinds of things that I not get stuck on, but just sort of. I feel like we could do a show trying to figure this stuff out. You know, <laughs> <laughs> somebody should do a weekly show. <laughs> <laughs> but but none of this has changed, right? I mean, you no. and I, we started doing OTP in what, 2011, 2012, whatever 20, it was? Yeah, 11 or 12, something right? like Is, that. Which feels like 100,000 years ago. And in, in, <laughs> in the world of social media is 100,000 years ago, you know? Do you, um, do you remember? I went back and looked. Do you remember what the first... Like the first big thing that we talked about was on that on first on episode. I think one. it was the bear falling out of a tree. 
It was. It was the bear falling out of the tree. I only remember that because I, <laughs> I think I I looked at the um the uh, the description of the first episode once. Bear falls out of tree. <laughs> this oh is my God. like how out of touch can Bill and Jeffrey be? <laughs> Coming next oh week, cat stays in tree. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Mouse eats cheese. Tune in; it'll be great. Uh, yeah, Sorry, I, it's, got it's, it's funny how how in in so many ways the, the 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 game has changed, but the question of whether or not to play it still stays the same. Do well, do I want do I want to take time away from the thing that I love? to market and sell the thing that I love. What What is the, is there a, you don't want to be the guy who is, you know, has a ponytail at 65 years old trying to hit on 20 year olds, right? <laughs> right. That's an image. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you don't want to be a ponytail. The... <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you grown your hair during lockdown? <laughs> Janice, can you uh, get me an appointment for a haircut this week? Um <laughs> Uh, but you know what I mean? Like I, it, sometimes I feel, and I've, I've talked to people who are my age or older than me who yeah. will say, you know, I, I can't let people know how old I am because they won't hire me to do social media or whatever, or, you know what I'm saying? Right, like they, right, 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 that, right. that, you know what I mean? That whole conversation, um, yeah, that, you know, I, I that mean, people in their thirties are out of touch because it's only people. Right. In, suddenly, it's I only feel, people in their twenties that are. Using yeah, it's this like thing. I remember yeah. when you and I, like uh, twenty years ago, when you and I were young Turks. Um, and there. Would <laughs> By be the like, way, I got I got to tell you. Do you know that the last season of All in the Family, Carol O'Connor was fifty four years old. Well, that's that's the thing. Wilford Brimley was uh, how old in Cocoon? <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> there's 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 a Twitter there's a Twitter account that is. So and so is now older than Wilford Brimley was in Cocoon, and it's like everyone you can think of, <laughs> <laughs> including Macaulay Tom Culkin. Cruise, Tom Cruise, and Nathan, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and Diane Lane, and like right. there's like everybody. Oh, I love Diane Lane. I <laughs> think God. she's terrific. I would, yeah, I would, I would throw you all under a bus for Diane Lane for like a date with <laughs> Diane Lane. <laughs> I've loved her since wow, a little romance. <laughs> Anyway, uh, but, but, but there is this idea, you know, when, when we were young and there were the older people in the office and they'd be like, it's really hard getting a job as an old person. And you'd be like, whatever, grandpa, the world's moved on. You know what I mean? There's like, there was that, right. there's that sensation. Get back suddenly, in the garage and make your buggy whip, gramps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you go start HP, you know? Um, <laughs> And I kind of feel like, oh, what are you going to do, a dot-com startup, Jeffrey? You know, like yeah, that's yeah, yeah. kind of what it feels like now. And I I don't think that chasing that can work. You know what I mean? Then, then yeah. I don't know. I think that um, – and I feel that I feel a lot of that way about social media in general. So I was like, I'll do it, and I'll do what I can, and I'll do what I want, but, you know, do what I – I'll be there. Because so I have to be there, um, right? To to the degree that you're able to, be. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I'm not going to change my lifestyle and everything I do in order to follow something that's going to be different in 18 months anyway. Like that just right. seems exhausting. I mean, it's like I, I back, you know, the old adage I used to use. I'm not going to be thinking about that on my deathbed. Like, oh, I should have put up uh, 10 image carousels on Instagram. <laughs> Maybe I should have rejoined Flickr. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and so I you know it's yeah I don't know it's it's uh, the whole f follower thing I, I don't know I, I don't know I, I wonder how it will change because it, it's you see the the studies like the numbers have gone through the roof uh, during lockdown and everything I wonder when people are finally able to sort of move about the world again what the numbers have gone up in social media yeah okay yeah, I, yeah. I haven't been I haven't kept up. Yeah, I, I saw a couple things that said that you know, time on time in front of the, these things has gone up because people are home and they've got the time. They have so nothing else to do. Yeah. When when this changes, when when you know either herd immunity takes over or yeah. the vaccine, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, Plato's retreat is going to reopen. <laughs> I I honestly wonder if 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 that's what's going to happen we're going to have this huge like sexual renaissance because everyone's going to be like i want to get it on i've been in a box for the last year you know 
<laughs> you don't think that there's a chance that that's going to happen? Maybe. Maybe it's it's gonna be like the it's the the free love of the of the late sixties yeah or early seventies all fact, over there, again. There was a there was a New York Times uh, uh, editorial op ed uh, by some uh, author, this woman who was basically saying that. That's um, funny. Yeah, I mean maybe right. I, you know something. If something's gonna change, it. the thing is you can never know. I mean even in my you industry, know, I, I'd settle for shaking hands and a hug. I mean that's that's where I'm at. Yeah. I'm like just yeah. contact with some people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's all that talk about how shaking hands is going to go on the outs and no one's going to shake hands anymore. It's like, that would be really sad. I hope not. I like shaking hands. Me too. You know, it's like I did that, the, the, the wicked woman that I met the other day. It's like, I met her. (laughs) You didn't rephrase that. You're wicked. (laughs) The wicked woman. (laughs) Yo, she's wicked. Um, (laughs) You know, she, she came up to me. I was like, hey, so nice to meet you. And it's like this can, can, yeah, you you bump elbows. I mean, you just like, hey, how you doing? Yeah, you know, like that's the best we got. You know, I want right. to I want to show you that I'm glad to meet you and like you know make a connection. And you can't do that just from like waving from six feet away. Right. Um, right. It's, hold on. Hold on. Take out your vaccination card. Yeah. All right. Good. <laughs> yeah, All right. Yeah. yeah. Can you please hold? It? Hey, speaking of which, when you see a movie and somebody comes to the door and they're like, "Hi, I'm officer," or whatever, and they say, "You know, can I see your ID?" and they hold up their ID for like a second and a half, and then they close it. Right. Is that enough to actually check? And then what are you looking for exactly? How do you know what? Yeah, a, how do what, I know what, what a real, what a real ID. FBI ID looks like? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, no, that's that. Yeah, I'm not wrong in that, right? I, no, <laughs> I've been, I wouldn't I've been know. Thinking, I'm like, oh, okay, it says FBI on it. What? Well, I've got a laser printer. I can print out something that says FBI. Yeah, I've seen all those movies where people make false credentials. I've seen National Treasure. Yeah. <laughs> all i gotta do is take a picture of myself and drag it on top of somebody else's id that looks like that and then i can get in any building i want to have you seen speaking of national have you seen nick cage's newest project for netflix it's uh like the origin of of dirty words and he's the narrator is it good no <laughs> he actually wait. i've only seen the trailer just go do, is after it we're actually done, go his watch project the or is it just they brought him in and he's he's talking on it I, no idea I don't know if they thought, hey, this would be good, or if he thought, you know, it would be fun. Nicholas Cage, The History of Swear Words. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, my Lord. That's the one. Is this, I lost my hand. Is this, is this, is this, is this what America <laughs> needs right now? That's right. <laughs> the world is on the brink, and only one man can bring us back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nicolas Cage! I I did watch uh, on the, on the rower a few weeks ago. I watched Gone in sixty seconds again. Ah, oh, the one with uh, Angelina Jolie. <laughs> yeah, I mean she's in it very Who? little, but he's yeah. I mean yeah. Uh, who's with- the guy? Oh my gosh, he was in uh, the the guy that was in Armageddon. Isn't he? Wasn't he in that too? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, uh, you know who I'm talking about? Yeah, uh, the guy who looks like kind of greasy all the time. Um, yeah, he's like a no offense, but he's he's hold, like a hold please, I will find it. Uh, yeah. Uh I'm looking it up. His I, name yeah, no, is talking. Will Patton. Will Patton. That's him. That's yeah. him. Yeah. He's in that too, right? Yep. He's he's yeah. in that too. And uh uh yeah, I mean, and again, it's not a gr- it's not a good movie, but it is a it's a good movie to to exercise to cuz it's <laughs> it's basically it's, Did you see somebody said that Rocky 4 was 35 minutes of of Rocky Four's runtime are are montages against music, <laughs> right? You know, it's basically a music him video. Lifting the tree and the and like, yeah. you know, we, didn't we talk about where the the the, the sit ups that he was doing, like yeah, hanging yeah, off yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the edge of the thing? Oh God, I want to do those sit ups. That's that's my goal. <laughs> you should do a trailer for you as a photographer. <laughs> Don't say a word. It's just you, you know, like on set, set to a music. It's just a montage of you working on different sets. <laughs> Lift, lifting up a camera, putting yeah. it down, and it's just like you're the best around. Yeah, I'm, I'm like I'm flipping through pictures and capture one, like, <laughs> and it's a close ups on my fingers choosing one to four stars. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that'd be so great! Oh, somebody should make that. That's a good idea. <laughs> you know, oh, 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 that's something I want to talk to you about. <clears throat> um, Gary Yost. Who, uh, How is Gary? God, I haven't talked to him in forever. How's well, he doing? Gary's good, and and good. and he emailed me um, uh, a few weeks ago, and he said, "Hey, um, this is what I've been working on lately, just to give you a heads up." And it was a press release for a VR documentary that he made about COVID with uh, with another guy. 
Wait, <clears throat> it's it's in VR? Right, exactly. Wow. And, right, it's like 35 minutes long. It's about this doctor who got COVID and what he kind of went through. And, you know, Gary called in some favors from all of his crazy uh, uh, 3D Studio Max buddies and all the rest of it. So he, he, he sends me a thing and I said, Gary, I'd love to see it, but I don't have a VR headset. So, and I've never used one. Have you used one of these things? No. Okay. So Gary said, well, listen, I have an Oculus Go that is sort of my loaner pair, and I've loaned it to this woman I know in Brooklyn. And so if I can connect you guys, maybe you can hand it off and you can see it before she sends it back to me. I was like, great. So the next day I meet up with this woman. She gives me this thing and I won't go into the nitty gritty of like hooking it up to your phone because it's like a whole thing. And this is an Oculus Go. And oh, so it's it's built for mobile phones, not the computer. Uh, no, it's it's it. Well, it's 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 self-contained, but you sort of set it up with an app from the phone just to like get it going. It does a Bluetooth connection to the headset just to like log into Facebook and to like download apps to it and stuff like that. Mm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So anyway, I you have to sideload his movie because whatever reasons. Um, so I figure all that out. <laughs> whatever reasons. Well, I just you know it's stuff we could get into for an hour, but we don't have an hour. So. <laughs> Um, next week, <laughs> Bill talking about side losing for reasons, um, <laughs> is, is that, you know, I put it on and first of all, do you have a handset that when you have the headset on is, has like a laser pointer that goes to infinity wherever you're pointing it. So the interface comes up in front of you when you have the headset on, you can choose like, you know, it's like a, like a, you know, point and click interface. Yeah. 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 And, uh, so even when you're setting it up, it says, what background do you want? Do you want, you know, a uh, 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 horseshoe bend in Arizona. And I go, yeah, oh, sure. Wow. Boom. And all of a sudden you are 20 feet off the edge and 20 feet up from the edge of horseshoe bend. And you can and look you can in look every around. direction, including down. No kidding. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. And it is a little, it's a little. Does it get you queasy? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. That, and that's a stable one. That's just like, you know, that's just a static picture that you're looking around and it's impressive. Then wow. there are, uh, um, roller coasters you can go on nope yep nope 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 that that one made me a little sick wow. um but anyway Gary, so what, are they, they're filming these things in like those little rico like 360 cameras that kind of a thing well i think that yeah some of the lower end stuff and some of the stuff you see on uh the internet and then there's not to just a quick aside there's also uh vr porn which is like a whole thing what which oh yeah where Figures. like you are in the room as the person being, you know, really? Yes. It's very weird. I just try. I was like, I want to see what this is like. And I was like, holy crap. That is very strange. Huh? So back to Gary's thing. So I watched Gary's movie and it's, it's VR 3d. So you're sitting in a hospital room. He's sitting on the, the thing talking to you and like saying, you know, and it was September 30th, and I suddenly started feeling whatever. And he's, like, looking at the camera. But while he's talking to you, looking at the camera, Jeffrey, you can turn around and look out the door and look at the really? crap that's on the table. You don't have to, like, he, you can completely ignore him and just look around the room. And can you hear the spatialness of the sound change <clears throat> yep, as, as well? You, as you turn your head. Wow. Right? Wow. So, so I watched this 35-minute documentary. In it, Gary also has got the um, the the uh, CT scans from the doctor of his chest, of his lungs, when he was at the thick of this thing, gave them to a radiologist. The radiologist is talking about them. And then he goes and turned the slices of the CT scan into a 3D model so you can highlight things inside of it and move around them in 3D. Wow. Like you're like, not like doing it. Like Iron you're, Man. Yeah, like you're... you're, like you're yeah. Wow. I mean, you're not doing it. You're flying around them, but like, you know, yeah, they, yeah, they made it that it. way. Yeah. And then, so I, so, and then there's a whole other thing where you're in this sort of completely rendered space of watching a coronavirus, uh, bump into and connect to a cell, get pulled into that cell and replicate itself and then pop back out. And so after this was all done, uh, next day I called Gary and I had this like, you know, half hour conversation with him about all this. And he tells me how he uses this. I think it was Japanese company's camera. There's only 20 of them in the world, and Gary has two of them. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> yeah. And, he's such a badass. <laughs> oh, he's, he's so badass. And that the, the 3D rendered thing, which was maybe two, two minutes, three minutes of, 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 of stuff, he said that this company donated $30,000 of render farm time. 
Wow. To render to render that two out. or three minutes. Two or three minutes. Wow. Because that's how high res it is. Wow. Because it, it needs to be. I mean, what I was seeing, I guess, was a 4K video. So everything around Wait, me so was the 4K. The 3D total. rendered thing that's in 360 as well. You can look around yeah. while that's playing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So wow. so so you're you're inside this thing, but like you're looking in front of you, and maybe you're only seeing the equivalent of like a 720p or less res. It's not very high res. Right. And because, there's all that other resolution around you. Well, because, yeah, because the resolution has to wrap all the way around you. So whatever no it is, it's 4K by, I don't know, it's like it's 4,000 by 4,000 pixels, the image that then gets wrapped. You know, it's it's not crazy high res when you're looking at the final thing. But that's wow. only because the one that I was using was a 4K goggles. There are 6K ones and there are 8K really? ones. And apparently wow. they rendered this thing at like 8K or 10K or some ridiculous thing. But the reason I bring this all up and say this is that it made both 2D video and stills feel like they were from the dark ages. And I'm wow. not saying I'm not saying that this is the way everything is going to be right. because it's very specialized. And when you hear how long and how much work and how much time it took for Gary to make a 35 minute piece, they're not making everything like this. It's, right. you know, it's just excruciatingly slow and talk about workflows. Holy crap. The things that these guys had to figure out cause no one knows how to do it. You know what I mean? Or yeah, there's a yeah. handful of people doing work like this, um, was, was absolutely nuts. And, you Could know, you see this becoming more mainstream in the next year, three years, five years, mm. or is, do you think it's going to necessarily kind of remain niche? I think it's going to remain niche, especially yeah, like the yeah, kind yeah. of, because you also got to remember, you put the camera in the room with the doctor, you can't be in the room behind the camera. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. So I said, there's one scene where the there, where the guy is narrating and saying, you know, and then I started feeling really bad and I told them I needed to go to the hospital. And, you know, smash cut, they're in the car and the wife is driving and then turning to talk to you in the passenger seat. So you're kind of sitting in the passenger seat and turn left and you see her, right? And she's like talking to you. But if you turn around, he's in the back seat. The doctor guy is in the back seat with an oxygen mask on because I guess that's how it went down when it went down. Right. But I said to Gary, I was just like, wait a minute, you put the camera in the passenger seat. Who's running the camera? And he said, the other guy was behind the back seat in the back, back, like hidden, controlling like it remotely. Down. Yeah. Wow. Driving wow. the car. You know, so, huh. I mean, it's it's not the kind of thing where, and there's also this idea that, you know, they're not telling me what to look at. I get to choose what to look at, as we right. were saying, which sort of, it's so much different than, say, a 2D movie where the whole point of editing and directing is to choose what it is the person's looking at. Right. And creating, it would completely change production design. And yeah. I don't wow. know that, I don't know that doing a real narrative thing it would it would feel it would be more like a video game than it would be a mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a movie you know what i mean in in that way in the same way that some of the games that you play you know what i mean like you're exploring the world and maybe you're on a hospital floor because there's zombies somewhere or whatever it is and you're going in and out of rooms trying to find whatever guns or whatever in the drawers where you could go through <laughs> the drawers and whatever you know what i'm saying spoken like a true gamer <laughs> i don't know you're looking through drawers you know, for guns or you're something doing <laughs> There's bodies on the floor. You're taking bullets, right? Is that what you do? Yeah. But you know what I mean, right? Like that's. <laughs> yes. But it, I, so I mean, it, it could be something more like that, but I, yeah. Anyway, the, the reason I bring it up is that it's, it's just so, it's so immersive that anything else feels really stayed. Yeah. And not bad necessarily, just it kind of recalibrates everything that yeah. came before. Yeah. I, I mean, I wonder how, how Gary had to. As, as the producer, director, creator kind of of this, how he had to sort of ramp up to produce it because oh, he's it been producing nuts. 2D forever. Yeah, yeah, it's it's nuts. And he, I mean, he's been he's been sort of obsessed with the 3D VR stuff for the past few years. Hmm. And so he's he's this is not like this is not his first rodeo. Yeah. But I mean, you know, even if you have if you have the stand in there, you can look down at the ground and the stand where the camera was isn't there because it's been painted out. So there's this oh, whole wow. thing where so you have this to whole go other and thing remove. that you have to do in post. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like it, 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 just the things. That, and then, then I said to him, I was like, wait, hold on a second. If somebody's editing this, are they editing in a headset? You know what I mean? Like, are you? Yeah. I mean, you'd have to, wouldn't you? Well, apparently you edit 
proxies. You you make like low res proxies and uh, Pr- Premiere, I think it was, and something else, but not Resolve can actually knows what this footage is, and you can scroll around it with your mouse while editing. So you can scrub, but then you can click on the image and move around it left to right. You know what I mean? Like how oh, you wow. can with the VR yeah, yeah, videos yeah, yeah. On, on on YouTube or whatever on your phone. Wow. Um, so I just just think about how many, how much more that That's adds crazy. to everything. Yeah. You know. I mean the the hardware in the production pipeline, the software, the time on on frame. Yeah. And, increases and, exponentially. And the computer time, just crunching all of this. Wow. I mean, wow. it's, it's, I think he's, it, I think he said it was 30 frames a second, or maybe it was 60, 30 frames. Hmm. No, I think it was 30 frames per second. But the camera that he uses is basically like a bunch of like little Sony sensors, but they're like, I forget what he said, 16 of them or something all around. All this, just like, radiating out. Yeah. And they all wow. overlap each other. So that basically what you're pulling in is a bunch of, uh, AVHC or whatever, you know, whatever that codec is. Right. Um, and is it is it stitching them all together? Well, then in you got there's time, special no manual? there's special software that you're stitching them after you come back with the disc. After you come them. back, wow, shit. Right, but then wow. you also it's not like you know with that kind of footage it's not like you have tons of leeway to to color grade it. Right. So it, I know it's just it was just in fact you know you should if you if you want I bet you Gary would do a show where he talks about it with you I bet you'd love to oh get, I'd love to yeah I'll, I'll shoot him an email I, I haven't like I said I haven't talked to him in a long time I'd love to just say yeah, hi I mean, anyway I, I may be getting some of the details wrong but it is it you know just from memory um, mm-hmm. but it was yeah just him describing the process and what's funny about it is that somebody like you or me or Dan or any of any of us sort of nerdy people. I can watch this thing and then talk to Gary and be think to myself, oh, I know what the pain points were. Like, how did you deal with this much footage? How do you, you know what I mean? How do you yeah, paint the yeah. person out? Wait, who's running the camera? How do you do audio? How do you, like, because you have to 3D mix the audio too and place wow. him where he's supposed to be in the 3D soundscape. Right, right, so right. So when right. you're turning your head, he is where he needs to be. That's crazy. It was that sounds not. so fascinating, though. Yeah, but and 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 it kind of made it didn't make me want to have one of these things. Oh, the other thing you could do is watch Netflix inside the headset. So you put huh. the headset on and you're watching Netflix on a screen that's twenty feet away from you, like in a living room. Oh, right, 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 right. Which is actually kind of interesting. I could imagine if you were on a plane and were the kind of person who was kind of claustrophobic. Putting this thing on, if you were inside of a room and put this thing on and snapped your fingers and suddenly you're standing in the Himalayas, it does sort of do that thing where you're like, you're sort of, your your heart just sort of opens up a little bit when you're in a big space. You know that mm-hmm. feeling? Mm-hmm. It does Interesting. that. Interesting. So I could imagine if you were somebody like stuck in a, like a friend of ours is going in to get a bone marrow transplant in a few weeks. And I just, I said to her, I was like, man, maybe we should get you one of these things just so you could stick it on. And be out of your hotel room because you're going to be sitting there for right. eight weeks. I wonder if, I mean, is are they being used for therapy or for... for uh, they should uh, be. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, it was it was a very, very cool uh, little uh, thing to play with. I, yeah, you know, I'm so glad it worked out that and you got I think to that connect the, with the headset. Oh, yeah. And then check this out. So then I could reconnect with the woman because she's turns out she's flying out to California. So she wanted to get it back to me so I didn't have to ship it back. She could just bring it back with her on the plane the next day. Mm-hmm. So she said, oh, I'm going to be over in your neighborhood. Here's the address I'm going to be at. We're going to, I'm going to be sitting with my friends out on the stoop. I'm like, okay. I'm looking at the address, and I was like, that sounds familiar. I know the people she went to meet because I oh hang out with them at the coffee shop on Saturday and Sunday mornings. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. The The husband was a producer on uh, the um, uh, American Pickers. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Yep. Um, so he How and I funny. have had lots of conversations about that too. Yeah. So anyway, but the, the new ones apparently are 6k as opposed to 4k. And I think the low end one with 64 gigs in it is like two ninety nine. Oh, they're all sold out. Bad. They're all sold out for Christmas. Like, you know, they're that all- is not bad. I would, I would expect them to, and they've, they've got the screens. They've got the, yep. all it's the, it's all chip. completely self wow. self-contained. Wow. I so, would expect them to be more. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I mean, they're, they're, the only thing a lot of people don't like is that you have to have a Facebook account to use them because Facebook owns them now. Oh, right. Oculus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, but yeah, the Quest 2, the 256 gig version, which is a lot more internal storage, is $399. But still, it's like, you know, three, 400 bucks. You could have a... So is it any, any non-VR content will just appear, as you said, like a big projected screen right yeah kind of yeah yeah okay, okay. and the, you can also you can also browse the web in there 
which is weird. Wow. It's 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 really it's neat. We're, we're inching towards Wally, aren't we? Yeah, the thing is that I don't I don't <laughs> think that these things are ever going to be in everybody kind of thing. I right. think they're going to stay a weird little niche kind of thing, but it is a neat trick. Interesting. You know, it, it it's a little your mind gets a little tired. Like you know how when you wear 3D glasses in the theater and your mind just your like brain gets tired, your eyes get tired. Right, right, right. right. There's a little bit of that going on. Where after a while you take it off and you're like, okay, I'm glad I... Oh, one last thing is... Is there a weird transition when you take them off, by the way? No, like, more do, of a transition you when you put of them on. you ease back into kind of reality, as it were? The first, the first few times you put it on, it's a little disorientating. But yeah. then the more you do it, the more you kind of know what to expect. So it's, it's not as bad. And I think this one is low res enough that it still kind of feels like you're looking at a screen versus looking at reality even mm-hmm, though your brain mm-hmm. kind of does a little bit of it. But there was a NASA thing on there where you're standing in a field and it's uh, some, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, um, astronaut is in your ear. And he's like, all right, you know, talking about the earth and how wonderful and beautiful it is. And you know, the whole thing. And then it goes, <laughs> and here we go. Five, four, three, two. And poof, you just go off the ground and the ground just pushes away from you. What? Yeah. It's nuts. You go all the way wow. up into space and you turn around and the moon is behind you in space because wow. you're in space. And then it curves around, goes around the earth and you're looking and you feel like you're in the space station. And then you come up on the space station and you fly by it. And Jeffrey, you can look around at the giant, you know, football field size space station as you're flying by no it. And you're kidding. It is nuts. And then you come wow. into land. Wow. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's the kind of, is that worth $300? No. But if you get the chance to play with one or some friend has one and can lend it to you for a week. Yeah. It's worth playing around with. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, wow. it's a fun That's little, cool. it's a fun little treat. Um, That's super cool. But, uh, yeah. Sorry. I feel like wow. I've been talking a lot today. No, it's good. That's good. Um, I have to run and do a thing in a few minutes, but uh, you got anything else you want to finish up with? No, I think we're good. You know, it, 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 we'll do another one next time. We'll, yeah. do, we'll, you know, we'll go back and figure out what else we can talk about. I'm sure yeah, there's yeah. some stuff left. <laughs> <laughs> Is there? <laughs> Did you see the person who wrote when we posted the other one? What year is this? They put up the, the GIF. Of... <laughs> You don't know, funny. do you? Yeah. <laughs> We're just messing with you. Uh, uh, all right. Well, let's 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 do let's do a sign off. Where where do where do people find you? Uh, at Bill Wadman on uh, Instagram. Before I delete all of my pictures and start <laughs> over again, <laughs> at Bill Wadman on Twitter. Um, I think that's it right now. Hey, have you have you tried uh, one last thing? Have you tried any of those virtual podcast? Uh, uh, there's apps, there's websites you can go to where everyone connects to the website and it sounds better and it records it all on the cloud. Do you know anything about any of this? Uh, I've tried one called Zencaster. And did it work well? It worked really well. Okay. Yeah. How much did they really charge well. for that? Uh, right now it's free during the course of the pandemic, but it's not much. I think it's 12 bucks a month, nine bucks a month, something like that. Oh, well, if you're using um, it, that's fine. Yeah. And, and the free account records in, I think, up to 256K MP3. Fine. Uh, and then the full account records in WAVE and AIF, yeah. I yeah. think. Uh, but I, I haven't had any problem with it. I mean, I, I've used it twice, I think. Uh, early on, I think people were, were saying that there was some drift, but I didn't notice anything. I mean, I, you know, It'd we be edit surprising this stuff if there anyway. was drift just because it would end up being all on the same server. You know what I mean? That we're getting you, all the audio yeah, simultaneously. You would so I don't know where it was coming from, but um, yeah, that's the only one I've tried. There was another one that, uh, oh man, who was telling me about one? Man, now I can't remember, but there was another one that people were talking Feels about. Feels like there's that, a few of these things out there. Yeah. They yeah, say they've, they've gotten started, really good. Yeah, yeah. We're, you want see, to try one next time? We're, 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 all, next we're time. all old school using Skype. Yeah. By the way, let's, they let's try one this. of the one of the other solutions on the next one. See how it okay. turns out. See if see if we sound any better. See yeah. If, well, see if, see if what we say sounds any better. <laughs> right. Does it? Is there an interestingness filter that we can enable? <laughs> uh, sadly, no. <sighs> All right, Jeff. Right. We'll talk to Don't you soon. Don't do thing. Uh, I'll uh, I'll talk to you later. Good talking to you. All right. You too. You know, it's funny how with some people, it doesn't matter how long you go not talking. When you do, it feels like you haven't missed a beat. I have no idea where these conversations with Bill are going, but I do hope they continue. 
Subscribe to Jeffrey Sidoris Everything in your favorite podcast app to get more conversations like these, as well as episodes of Process Driven, In Between, Iterations, basically everything I do all in one feed. Connect with me on Instagram and Twitter at Jeffrey Sidoris, that's J-E-F-F-E-R-Y-S-A-D-D-O-R-I-S, or on my website at jeffreysidoris.com. If you've got questions or feedback, you can email me at talkback at jeffreysidoris.com. The music in this episode was licensed through Artlist.io, which is a terrific resource if you're a YouTuber or a filmmaker looking for music for your projects. Use the link in the show notes to get an extra two months free when you sign up. So thank you very much to Artlist. This is the last episode of 2020, but I will be back in January with more conversations, and I hope you'll join me. Until then, and as always, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for your time and attention, and I'll talk to you on the next one. Uh, I, for some reason, I'm, I was just clicking on CNN while waiting for you, and there was something about the Bachelorette woman, I don't know, getting engaged on whatever that show is, right? I guess The Bachelorette. I don't Isn't know. Isn't that I've, the whole point? Yeah, I've never seen any show? of these things. No, but I, I was just wondering, how often do those people actually either get married or stay married? Oh, I don't know. I've never watched one. Yeah. I don't know. Two th- two th- only two-thirds of seasons end with proposals. Then out of those proposals, only five have led to marriage, with The Bachelorette Wait. having a su- better success rate at 30% than The Bachelor at 11%. Wait, oh, how could only two-thirds end in a proposal? When Isn't that the premise of the show? I guess. I guess sometimes it's, I choose that person, but we're not going to get married. I'm yeah. assuming. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, these things go right over my head. I don't understand. <laughs>